Welcome to the Next News Network. I'm Gary Franchi. Joining me now for the special web edition is World Bank whistleblower Karen Hudas. She's one of many of a coalition of whistleblowers who are making waves across the planet. Uh, she's joining me now in studio. Karen, welcome to the program. Thanks for having me on, Gary. Karen, uh, just before we went to air, we were discussing uh, the global corruption, the global syndicate, uh, the bankers. Who are these people? Who are the individuals? Who are the puppet masters pulling the strings of, of the bankers? Well, <laughs> it, you, meant, you had mentioned yeah. the Jesuits in, in a previous interview, so I'm intrigued as to know where is the connection to the Jesuit order uh, as well as you know, in, through the Vatican and, and, and beyond. There's many secret societies in the world. Um, many people speak of the Illuminati and the Masonic Orders, um, the Order of the Garter. Um, many of these super elite organizations uh, that operate in secrecy. So I know I've named a few already, but if you could help us elaborate on these points, who are the people pulling the strings? Well, do you remember when um, there were ghettos and you had something called a Judenrat that were the ones that would draw up the lists of the Jews that were going to get exported the next day. Do you remember how that system worked? Well, um, it was a little before my time, but um, you know, his, history would, would dictate the, what, what happened in those ghettos. So elaborate, these were These were traitors to their people mm -hmm. who were helping... Um, because they thought they were going to save themselves. That's maybe why they did that, but it doesn't matter what their motives were. They were doing the work against their people. Now, think of this as an elaboration on a larger scale, and what we're dealing with actually is humanity and the elite, the secret societies, the Vatican. They're traitors to humanity. Because the one at the very core that's pulling the strings is a different species. They're not the human race. They're called Homo Capensis. They have been on Earth together with humanity for before this Ice Age. And the reason I know about this is because um, I was um, trying to help out a movie producer um, who couldn't get his movie um, it was called The Banksters Made Off with, Ameri with America, uh, Edmund Drille, and he introduced me to his network of whistleblowers. One of the people in that network is a neurologist who went to Yale Medical School and was retired, and he was trying to find out what was at the very core of all of this corruption. And um, So you, you mentioned this... this, this, this this species, an additional species of, of, of humans, or, or... No, they're not humans. They are so distinct from humans that if they were to mate with humans, their offspring would not be fertile. Now, are you speaking of um, the, the biblical Nephilim is, 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 a, is, a, is an entity that people have discussed and, and um, tried to understand for, for, for millennia, uh, and that is the, the, the race of of, of offspring of humans and the fallen angels from no these are not the angels these are not spiritual. well, the, well the, nephilim, the nephilim themselves were were the offspring of the fallen angels and humanity is this the same they species? are not fallen angels mm -hmm. they are critters people who I am getting emails from saw them the day before they look just like human beings except they have these big skulls and that is why in the Vatican, you see these crazy meters is what they're called. And that's why the very first Jew, Moses, wore one of those things. Because he was, uh, he was one of those homo capensis as well. We have DNA samples of them. And, and the reason we know this is because it was in the papyra of one of the pyramids. I found this out from um, one of the from the internet. But um, what 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 is really remarkable, actually, is that we have had so much evidence, and we haven't had any studies into it. Um, if you if you look at the archaeology, there there is um, a civilization 
off the coast because the, um, the sea level has risen by 400 meters. But what do we know about this ancient pre-Ice Age civilization? We do have a map that's left over from there because it shows the coastline of Antarctica before the ice froze on it. And it's, it's following that land mass perfectly. So, so what we have is we have evidence. There's also evidence in South Africa. There are a lot of these skulls that you find. And what You're speaking of the elongated skulls that, that have been found um, in graves and, and even some, some of the some of the, um, the skeletons found with these are, are in fact giant, giant people. That is something different. No, I'm not talking about that. I am talking about a large skull. The and elongated skull, the, the elongated cranium. Some are in Peru, some are elongated. But in um, other places, they're just round like pumpkins. And the individuals that were seen in Egypt, I've seen drawings of what their skulls looked like. It was just massive, much larger than human being skulls. And also, you know, you, in, in a human skull, there's um, something they call the parietal, where it's in three different segments. This um, critter doesn't have those separations. It's just... So, so you're saying that the, this specific species of individuals um, is occupying the Vatican and functioning through the Jesuit order? Yes, but they're also working in the banks in Portugal because one of the people who saw this, um, you know, in Saturday Night Live there was um, a broadcast of something called the Coneheads. Mm. So that's a slang word for them. Although my mother refers to them as the boneheads. But they're alive and running around and doing all kinds of mischief. Now, so, some people might find the information that you're presenting right now to be completely... Some, some people might say it's completely crazy. What do you say to those people who are watching this right now going, I don't believe a word of it? I would say you need to read the articles that Ed Spencer has sent me. You need to look at the skulls in the museums. You need to read the DNA studies. And you need also to think about what kind of motive um, the human beings might have for being traitors to their species. Why would they do this? Why would we have a banking system where all the money ends up going to the Vatican and people run around starving? Why would we have... Um, for example, um, if you look at what the actual teachings of Jesus Christ were, as opposed to when you had um, translations and various things happened and got put in there, and as um, some of the whistleblowers have been discussing this, information, articles on Homo Capensis have disappeared from the Internet. They've been taken down. And other critics who... I don't know why they're getting all the coverage they are and they've been getting features in Wikipedia. Let me talk a little bit about Wikipedia. Sure, okay? sure. I had an experience with Wikipedia because I got involved in trying to edit the um, biography on Robert Zellick, who was the World Bank president. Mm -hmm. And I was trying to explain to people that the United States had lost the gentleman's agreement, which you could demonstrate. You could see I couldn't get that into, into Wikipedia. They were clearly being controlled by this group that, um, that is controlling all the capital markets so do you and think the banks. So do you think that these same people were preventing your Wikipedia edits? Yes, and what I'm trying to say is that this person who was attacking the information on Homo Capensis had a big, long article featuring her on Wikipedia. So I know who Wikipedia is. I know whose interests Wikipedia serves. And when somebody who's just starting out gets a big write-up, I know what that really means. So what does it mean? It means that there is manipulation of information. It means that people are given exposure and credentials that they haven't earned. You know, some people have said, um, I obviously have to be a disinformation expert because I'm getting press coverage. I can show you all of the effort that I took to get exposure and for people to vet my story. And that's, I'm simply getting yeah, what do, what do you, what do you What do you say to those people who would call you a, a disinformation agent who has been um, 
putting out information to confuse people or to misdirect people, um, people that might even uh, leave comments in, 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 in the video section below and say, um, she's actually a World Bank agent provocateur. How, how do you address that question? What I say is that if you look at what it is, don't look at me, don't criticize me, look at what I'm saying, see if I have anything to back it up, if I have documentation for it. But one of the other criticisms I get is that I couldn't be alive. If, if I were for real, I wouldn't have made it this far. And the answer that I have to that is I say, um, I have always been working in a team of whistleblowers. If something happened to me, it was just going to blow up what I was trying to um, uncover because I was talking about a cover-up of corruption. I didn't have a document, any one document I needed to reveal. I was pointing to a whole system of cover-up. I was pointing to the fact that the media was not telling the story the way it deserved to be told. They had an agenda. They had a hidden secret agenda. As I've said, the, the whistleblowers are like Toto in The Wizard of Oz pulling the curtain back. And people are now seeing the wizard, which is this um, corrupt group. And they're also seeing that the mainstream media is projecting onto a screen their propaganda, which is not reality. What you get in the mainstream media has a hidden secret agenda. It's, it wouldn't be there if people whose interests are behind that, that uh, cabal is what they're called. So on the internet now, uh, anyone can publish any documents, any, anyone can publish any website to, uh, to establish um, a, a historical record. How do, we, how do we know the information that you've been receiving is actually authentic? I mean, uh, the, the, the birth certificate of the President of the United States uh, has been in question for, for, for so many uh, years, when, even when it was released, uh, the most recent official one was released, they found multiple layers uh, in the birth certificate. So um, what's to say that information that you've been receiving hasn't been doctored by another agency or another entity to provide you with information that could misdirect? Because if they see perhaps that you're out there speaking um, these things, that people are going to believe you because of what you say, but they may be feeding you wrong information. Is there any possibility that could be true? Well, as for the storyline that I have, I can give a very detailed chronology showing at any given stage what I was revealing, who I was revealing it to. It's very compelling. That's not something that can be doctored. That is absolutely, um, it's just, um, it's there for anybody to read. And so that's, if anybody is saying, am I for real? Yeah, I'm for real. Now, um, am I doing a good enough job on the information that I'm getting from other whistleblowers? Um, sometimes I'm doing a lousy job. So I got, I got snookered on a story about um, a, a planet that was uh, Nibiru. I got really snookered. And what was really interesting there, I learned a lot, was um, I tried to correct the information. And every time I corrected the information, it was taken down from the Internet. Um, so I learned that you have to be really a little careful about information and vetting it. Well, certainly, certainly practicing discernment uh, in everything we do is, uh, is something that, that must be practiced, especially when we're handed documentation that um, can make certain claims and, of course, vetting the documents themselves. Um, so, so back to the topic at hand and the, the, the global cabal of, of puppet masters who are pulling the strings of the international elite uh, and the banksters. I had mentioned um, the Illuminati and the Masons and I, I mentioned the, uh, uh, the Order of the Garter and these, these, these super secret organizations. Um, but you take it all back to the Vatican. You take it all right back to, to, to those um, this, this species of people. Um, if I could provide a little bit of historical perspective for a moment, when, when the Illuminati was, was supposedly disbanded, um, some people believe that it just didn't disappear. It went underground. Um, and it simply spread itself out. Um, would you say that the same is happening with this species um, of, of 
you know, I, w- I would say, you, you say they're not human, but uh, for, for, for lack of better words, I'll say they're uh, a species of humans. Do you think that these individuals have peppered themselves through some of these organizations as well? What I know is... Or is it isolated simply to the Vatican? What I know is that um, when you get to be a 33rd degree Mason and the Black Pope and also the archaeologists, they all know that Moses was Akhenaten. And if you know that, then you know that Akhenaten had this huge skull and his daughters had this huge skull. So I'm going to presume that they probably also know that there are individuals and they're not humans. They do not have the same kind of DNA that we do. And I can tell you what I know about them. They're very mathematical. Their average intelligence is about 150. uh, And they do not have um, uh, creativity. They're not um, emotional. And the other thing is that um, in the process of working with all of these whistleblowers, um, I've learned a lot about the strengths of, of Homo sapiens. Because, um, you know, we're not, uh, we're not giving each other salaries. We're not giving each other honors. We're not giving each other anything other than additional hard work. Um, but we also know who we're working for. We're working for all of humanity. So I, I have to ask this question because some of the viewers who are watching right now are going, they're talking about another species with an elongated skull. You mentioned the, the, the high intelligence, the lack of creativity. Um, and it's going to be hard for people to grasp that reality. And, of course, everyone has to do their own homework to discover these things. Um, but given your whistleblower status with the World Bank, do you think that by promoting or discussing these types of theories hurts your credibility and all in the minds of some of the people who um, may have first heard of you through the whistleblower status at the World Bank? I'll tell you what, I've gotten a, a fair amount of feedback like that. And I'll tell you what I say to these people. I say that um, it has been an incredible experience to have made it this far. And, uh, and the number one thing that I've learned in that process is to trust my own intuition because that has um, really um, served me very well. And my intuition is telling me that this is the time to tell people this. Well, Karen, thanks for taking the time. I, I, you know, I, I wanted to ask you some tough questions and, and have you here to discuss some of these hard facts, and I thank you for, uh, for taking the time to sit down with me today. Thanks for having me. All right. Gary Franchi signing off for the Next News Network. That was Karen Hudas. She's a World Bank whistleblower. Uh, Karen, what's the website? My website is www.kahudes.net, but just Google me and you'll find all kinds of stuff. All right. You heard it here. Google Karen Hudas, you'll find out more. Uh, as always, research the facts for yourself. Discover um, uh, dis- discovery on your own is always going to be um, the best. And like Karen says, listen to your intuition.